So I was lured in to turn it off when I uh, connected it in. It's the old push fit and it just goes dead brittle with time. And he's just pushed it. I don't know if his fingers don't through it. This is our mark. This is the one we're going to go to. So I'm going to send the pilot drill through now, which will take us into that void within the kitchen. And hopefully, A, not hit any of the pipes that are in there, and B, it will marry up to roughly where I think we're going to be at with it. We'll do a little old school trick to get the olive off. It's just cut the diagonal line. Here we go. It's a, a tried and tested method, but you've got to be dead quick with it. Why I didn't check it, schoolboy error. You know, you get that customer that just watches you all the time. <laughs> it's him, he's been like a fucking parrot on my shoulder. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, we've had an influx of new subscribers. So for the benefit of all the new subscribers, I'm Mark. This is just my channel is showing real world plumbing, everyday plumbing from small jobs to big jobs to jobs that go right to jobs that go wrong. So I'll just show you everything, everything around that and everything in between. Go to the merchants, etc., etc. So what have we got today? We've got um, I'm just on my way now to go look at a waste pod. A customer of mine rang me up. I think he's hit it with his bin. You know, the grey bins or the green bins. People always put them in the gardens up against walls and stuff. I think, from what I can gather by the pictures, he's, he's hit it or broke the waste pipe. Anyway, we're going to go and have a look at that now. It's literally round the corner, five minutes, well, not even that, two minutes round the corner from Plum Base. So I'm going to go to the job first, see exactly what's wrong, see exactly what I need pop to plum base pick up some bits and then we'll swing back around and get that sorted and then also we've got another couple of little jobbing jobs that if i can record i will so uh let's go and get it so we've all got those little jobs where the customers loyal customers you've had for ages they go just drop in and do it when you can so this is one of them jobs but when he showed me the picture i thought we need to get this one sorted so what we've got is this is the waste pipe coming from his kitchen sink it's the old push fit and it just goes dead brittle with time it's obviously been there years and years but i think he came out and noticed a bit of a crack in it and he's just pushed it and obviously his fingers gone through it so what we're going to do and you can see it as well where it's going into the wall here so i bet if i push that yeah look, if i push that it would just fall through so what we're going to do is because these bosses are just you know they're not great what I'm going to do is cap this one off, just put a bung in this. I've been and picked up the materials this morning, I forgot to get a bung, so we've got to pop and get another bung. But what I'm going to do is cut another boss in there, come out of there, put new pipe work in. That just goes straight into the kitchen sink, which is the other side of there. So we'll put a new bit of pipe in there and just bank that one off. So it's not going to take much to... Uh, also, I've just noticed, it's just pulling out of there anyway. So yeah, it's not going to take much to just... Well, apart to be honest so that's off we'll clear that out get a bung in there cut this one in and push a new bit of pipe through there and work back from that so this is where it comes to under the kitchen sink so what we do we just disconnect it from here and then just pull hopefully get this pipe work out and then just slide the new one in so i've just took that trap off and the pipe is just completely blocked up anyway and it stinks. What I'm going to do is see if I can pull this whole pipe straight out. Oh yeah, hopefully I should be able to. And knock the trap everywhere. So luckily, that's straight through. Sometimes you can get the waste where they'll come through and just offset slightly to get into the kitchen cupboard, but that one is straight out. And prime example of, you know when people put like, when you're swilling plates off and bits of food and whatnot go down your waste trap. That's the uh, outcome. Can you see through that? You can barely see through it. There you go. 
just slightly. Right, we've got this white solvent going back in, you know, white and grey, but they've also got white um, going into the stack anyway. And to be honest, it's that much discoloured, it's more white than grey anyway. Uh, we'll see if this will push. There we go, oh, look at this, look. It's all going to plan, unlike previous weeks. So we'll slide this inch and a half back through. Oh, look at this. I think that's in. I'll just go and check. Drill this boss into here, so just line it up right in the centre, just mark the centre line, like so, and then you can just drill with a 57mm hole cutter straight through and that will be the perfect size for the inset of that to clip into. <laughs> Right, so we're ready now to connect this up, but as plenty of you will know, because you've got a fixed point here, and all this is glued in, so this is a fixed point here, we haven't glued there, so that's a wet point. So what we'll do, we'll put solvent weld in there, solvent weld in there and there, and then solvent weld in there and there, and that just gives us, because that's not connected, that just gives us, in theory, that little bit of movement so we can push that fitting into there. So we've so once we've got the glue in all of these for a moment, for probably five or six seconds, it's gonna be we're gonna be able to move it around a little bit. So that gives us a chance to get that fitting into there, this straight, that straight where it needs to be, and for it to go off in position there, if that makes sense. It's a, a tried and tested method, but you've got to be dead quick with it. So I'll put you just there. Where are we glued up to? So that point's glued, that, that's all glued, so the only unglued points are there, there, and there. So I'll put a ring of glue around them now, and you can watch me, hopefully, touch wood, get it all in. Perfect, you've got to be as quick as that. So now we'll just wipe these joints down and it's perfectly nice. With that's upright, we're straight into the boss. Everywhere is glued, every point is glued. And what we'll do, we'll pop and get a bung for that, but I've got to, before I forget, connect the uh, trap back up inside for the kitchen sink. There we go, all working perfectly. Right, let's pop and get a bung for there. Nice little job done and dusted. Another bread and butter job and just in time as well because it looks like the heavens are about to open and it's gonna piss it down with rain. What I'm gonna do now is give a customer of mine a ring. I went last week, I think, no, it weren't last week. It was the start of this week. I'm all over the shop still. Start of this week, had a tiny little leak on the nut and olive on a radiator tail. So I just nipped it up as we do, thinking it was just gonna be that. But he's messaged me this morning and said, it's still weeping. So what I think I'm gonna do is uh, i think it's on a gravity fed system that one so bung the tanks and just quickly whip the valve off repaste it retape it make sure the nut and olive are all right and hopefully that'll do the job so i'm going to drop him a message see if he's in um and see if we can get around there and get that done just got to my mate's house and he called me around the other day because he had a little leak on this radiator pipe here there's a bit of staining down the front so i nipped it up as we do thinking that'll be it and he messaged me and said no it's basically put a a cup full egg cup full of water into there overnight so he's on a gravity fed system so i've got my bungs here what i was gonna do was undo the nut with it all still filled up i was going to shut the rad off undo the nut try and put some paste around it and tighten it up hoping that'll be sorted but i thought for the sake of it i'll go and chuck the bungs in the edit tank upstairs shut this rad off open the drain valve up there and just drop it down and put some paste around it, maybe even put some PTFE tape on it. It looks like it's been done here, so I might even whip that one off and do it all properly. Or we might go whole hog 
and take that out of there and do it properly anyway. So, but to be fair, it looks like. No. Right, let's go and bung the tank and see what we can do with this. Oh, we'll just get up in the roof. It's always a little surprise, it's always a little treat to see where the tanks are hidden. Looks like these ones are here. Or at least the hot water's there. Oh, heating's here. Perfect. So, let's have a quick look in here. Right, so we'll get some bungs into this tank and um, take the pressure off it downstairs. There we go, we've got the one in the vent. I don't know if you can make it out, but the feed is right directly underneath the ball valve. So we'll pop downstairs now, let the water out, let the pressure off it and get the vacuum into the system. And then we'll be able to whip that valve off, probably make the tail out as well and see what's going on. So that's the system bunged. I've shut that side of the rad down. Whenever I'm doing any sort of work now, since buying this Aquavac, I always get it out just in case anything goes untoward and uh, you've got to suck up a bit of water. So always have that handy. But what we'll do now, we'll just crack this drain off open and just see if the water, the pressure will just come off. It should just be able to just fill this little tub up. So, there we go. We should be able to just take or get the vacuum going in this system. So we've dropped the system out and it's just holding its vacuum now. It's just drilling out a tiny little bit at the end now but it means we can whip this valve off now and what i'm going to do is take that out remake that remake that and uh, put some paste and possibly tape around these fittings and make sure they're all right good so with that bug in we can just disconnect this and we know we're gonna be all right just a little bit of water in there so Plum thumbs coming handy for that. We just pop that on there for now. Like so, but yeah, as you can see, this is completely dry anyway. So we we'll pull the we'll pull the nut down if we can. Yeah, look. There's no paste or anything on that. So we'll get some paste on it. I might even take that off if I can get that off. I haven't got a um, olive pulling tool. I think I lost it on a job once. But if need be, we can just cut the side of that with a hacksaw, whip that off, pop a new one on, and we know where we're at. So we'll do a little old school trick to get the olive off. Is just cut a diagonal line. Not all the way through though. It's about there. And then there we go. Just cracks off. And then get off, pop that olive off. Like so. And what I am gonna do as well now is just whip this out of here remake it with some Loctite 55A so it looks a bit better and B we know it's all sealed in and get some paste on there as well. What I've done here is I've remade that joint now, drained the system, remade it, pasted it up, pasted this one up. As you can see we switched that out because it just looked a bit of a, an eyesore so I've put that in there and refilled the system. We'll get it up and running and check it's all alright and touch wood it is. So, just gone round and uh, turned the heating on, making sure all the rads are getting hot. The one that we had off isn't getting warm, and I thought, it's a bit odd, drained it down, let some air out of it. So, then I thought, right, I take the top of the valve off, make sure the pin's not playing up. So I took that off, and yeah, you're all gonna say it, it's all, it's leaking from there. So, sod's law, that valve was what was causing the leak to show at the back. Why I didn't check it, schoolboy error we've all been there we've all done it schoolboy error so i've gone and got another valve so what we'll do we'll swap the valve out drain it that again we'll go and bung the tank like we did before bung the tank drain the water out of it and just whip that off and put a new one on i've just been to pick up which is here so 
we'll get the water drained down, get off. You can just see it, just make out the little drip coming from the top. Why I never checked it, I don't know. Just went in, bullet a gate. So remember kids, always check the obvious first. It's getting red hot now and the one back to back with it but again just a schoolboy error not checking that the top of that pin is where it was leaking from i just assumed should never assume anything i just assumed it was going to be coming from the back but we've drained it down again switched that valve out new one on everywhere's getting red hot now so yeah just got to remember look him look look you, you know you get that customer that just watches you all the time <laughs> It's him. He's been like a fucking parrot on my shoulder. So, yeah, so that's the valve changed out and we're getting nice and warm now. So that is a prime example of checking the tiniest little thing. Why I didn't check underneath that TRV head, I don't know. I just went in there. The first day I went there, tightened it up. Second day, just thought, right, I'll um, strip it down and tighten, you know, make the nuts up a bit better. Um, Schoolboy error there. I'll hold my hands up to that one. So yeah, if you're ever going to do that, if you're ever going to change a rad valve that's leaking from the top, check obviously check the nuts, but also just whip the head off, check that it's not just coming out the spline with a plunger. Uh, right, okay, so that's that job done. Before I go any further, I want to let you know about a massive event that is coming in July of this year. If you haven't heard about it, it's called Building Careers Live. It is aimed at apprentices and new people coming into the trades, as well as everyone who's in the trade anyway, not just plumbing, carpentry, brickwork, electrics, groundwork, everything to do with construction. Build with A&E, if you don't follow them on YouTube, I'll put a link below. But Build with A&E, Tony from Build with A&E, is it's a sort of a dream of his to set this up. So it's happening on the 16th and 17th of July. Students come for free. It's like a big career-based insight into the whole construction industry so if you're new into the game or you're just in the process of getting back into it or, or anything be it plumbing anything i'll put the links in the description below go and check it out because it's going to be a massive event there's 40 plus trade careers people there's influencers youtubers people you know from social media instagram they're all there i'm there for both days so what from what i can gather i'll have There'll be like a plumbing hub, a plumbing area. So come along, ask me questions. There'll be, I think, Nath from Caprani is going to be there. Um, Mac from Smart Pipe Plumbing. Um, and I think a few others that I'm not 100% sure on yet. But again, you'll have electricians there. All the ones that you sort of know from social media, along with others. And it's just going to be a great weekend. Come, have a little go at doing some plumbing. We'll have some jigs set up and... You know, you can solder pipes up or even even if there's a press fit bit, I might even have a go at that. There'll be a press fit bit and you can just have a little go. Hands on, ask me anything, ask the other plumbers that are going to be there. Same with electricians, same with brickies, same with everything. I'll run through a few details. I've written them down because I'm crap at remembering. So students, if you're a student, you go for free. 40 odd plus tradesmen, uh, influencers, etc. So there's a massive, huge tool station there, which they'll be doing deals for the day, offers and stuff like that. Um, it's based in Warwickshire, it's not far off the fuss, so it's straight off the M40, give or take. There's a careers hub with careers advisors, and they can put you in touch with so, so many other different avenues if you want to go down it. Um, there's a free shuttle bus from Leamington train station, so if you can only get to the train station, don't worry about that. Hit, get on the shuttle bus, take it straight there, and also free parking. But yeah, it's going to be a massive event. It's the first year they've done it. I say, build with A&E are, are the ones behind the whole project. And if you've watched anything they do on YouTube, you know how good it's going to be. I'll put all the links below. I'll put a link to the actual website. I say, students go for free. It's just going to be a mega weekend. I think tickets are selling out really fast for it. So make sure you get on that. Right. There's my little promo bit for them. Done. Um, let's go on with the video. Outside tap fitting. We all been there, done that. We all fitted them. Nine times out of ten, people have them at the back of their kitchen unit, you know, directly under the kitchen window. Well, unfortunately, this kitchen unit is bang in the middle of this kitchen. 
So we're against a bit of a dilemma because she, the lady obviously wants an outside tap. What we're going to have to do, or the only way I can see it, it's going to be on the side wall of this house. I'll take you outside in a minute and show you exactly where it's going to be. But what I'm going to have to do is put a hole here in this unit. Probably, um, probably I'll probably use that hole cutter, like 57 mil hole cutter just so that we can open that up so I can make sure there's nothing behind it because we're going to have to get a long pilot bit in here on the angle, sort of so on the angle, to be able to drill through because that, it's hard to explain, because that covered end panel is roughly about here. Now, it's all built in this side, so we can't get to it that way. We can't have the drawers out and take the side of the unit out. That's, there's no way of doing that. So we're going to have to drill an access hole there, look through, make sure there's nothing the other side, get a long drill bit, drill through from inside out, which is usually a big no-no, and just go through dead, dead softly, not on hammer, hoping it doesn't blow a lot of the brickwork off. Um, because if I drill outside in, chances are we're not going to be in that cupboard. I might do a little bit of measuring, but with, there's nothing outside. I'll take you outside. There's nothing outside to work back from, if that makes sense. Um, quickly show you around here. So it's going to go around this area, not a guaranteed it'll be behind these slabs. But there's nothing, there's no flue pipe, no pressure relief or anything coming out that I can measure back from to work out exactly where we're going to be here. So uh, it's going to be slightly pot look, hence why I'm going to have to drill from inside out. So we've got the extra long, meter long drill bit out. As I say, we'll drill a pilot hole there and then hopefully we'll get this somehow inside the cupboard there. Hopefully when, when that's drilled in, we'll be able to poke it through to the wall and then get a drill on the end of that while it's in the cupboard to try and pilot that hole through or at least give us an indication on where it's going to come through the wall well the other way of doing it is by which i may do it's just depending on how the walls are out is measure from the lip of that brick across and hopefully get it into position so I've just tried to work out measuring from that back wall across and then measuring from the floor levels up. And I'm getting around there if that's where we're going to look at putting it. So I'm not sure whether to drill from outside in, which would say blowing any bricks off and then go from there internally and seeing if it's going to marry up. It's just because we've got that void that's sort of throwing me out. <laughs> So yeah, working that out outside, I've, I've sort of allowed it around here. So I don't know whether to drill from outside in. Hmm. Right, so I've just re-measured it. Always measure twice, drill once. Measure twice, cut once. So I've just re-measured it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill through that mark outside, come through the wall, and hopefully we're tallied up with that hole that we're gonna put in just there so fingers crossed so this is our mark this is the one we're going to go to so i'm going to send the pilot drill through now which will take us into that void within the kitchen and hopefully a not hit any of the pipes that are in there and b it will marry up to roughly where i think we're going to be at with it now in that void I think somewhere anyway let's go have a look so let's have a look oh look at that I could not have worked that out much better than being about six inches out <laughs> but at least we know it's in that cupboard so what I can do now is put the main drill bit through and get the outside tap fitted outside and the pipework slid into this cupboard and then we can work 
in here and get it connected with a check valve, full bore isolation valve, and what we can do is put a cap over that anyway, so you're not gonna see any issues there. Okay, that's the plate fixed onto the wall. What we'll do, we'll put the tap on right at the end. We'll get it uh, locked tight 55 on there and screw it in at the end. We'll go in now and connect up under the sink. So we're now inside with this pipe. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put check valve there, isolation valve there, elbow, and then straight into a compression T here. Um, and what we can do is I've just whipped the washing machine hose off there. So I'll put, a, put a little bucket underneath there, turn the water off, drain all the water out of that point there and get it connected up. And then what I'll do, open that up. There we go, that'll drain the water out. So we can get the fittings on there and put into that. So that's that all connected in now. So we've come off with a compression T, full bore isolation valve there and a double check valve there. So we'll turn the water on to the tap. Like so, I can hear it running outside. So we'll go out and switch it off. So as Laura didn't turn it off when I uh, connected it in. There we go. Always make sure they're turned off before you turn the water on. But yeah, so that's sorted then. So they've got the isolation under the uh, under the kitchen sink for that. You can turn it off in the winter. It's nice and neat. You can water all the flowers and wash the cars now. So that's another little bread and butter job done and out the way. Nice little outside tap, straightforward enough. So again, this week has been filled up with all those little jobs that I've had building up in the background. Been to look at a couple of big jobs for Scott, whose barn renovation we've just not long done. And also, uh, before anyone asks, I went there the other day and upped the heat in a little bit. Apparently, Scott went in the following morning and it was like a sauna. It's red hot. So we know the underfloor heating and everything is working. Not that there was ever a doubt. I was just dubious of how the air source... Uh, how the ground source stuff worked and shout out to everyone that replied and sort of explained it to me i'm really interested in that ground source air source stuff so uh anyone that's got any information on that just drop it in the comments below i'm dead interested in that so uh hope you enjoyed today's video and i shall catch you in a week